Hey team, welcome back. We got a request for Tideman, which is a problem I did not go over originally, and we are going to go over that now. So we pulled up the Tideman problem set here. We are working on the first function, the vote function. Now I'm assuming, as usual, that you did your W get and you read the understanding here. We're not going to review that. That was up to you already. So let's get into it. We want to complete the vote function. So let's get into Tideman here. Let's go down to our first to-do in which I've put some notes here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the name is valid, right? We have our Boolean function, like I said, a true or false function here. And it's got your three inputs. It's got the rank, it's got the name, and it's got the ranks. So rank and ranks, because we're updating ranks from current rank and the name. So first we need to check if the name is valid, right? So we need a loop to begin iterating over the names. So we're going to start with our first loop. It's going to be a for loop, so for int i... Uh, equal to zero if i is less than the candidate count let's space that out so i have less than the candidate count then we need to keep moving up so i plus plus so that's just to check if the name is valid once we open that loop we need something to compare the candidate's current name with the input name using string comparison right so stir comp if the names are equal then we found a match so let's do if stir comp and let's get that o out of there so so if stir comp and then we're going to do candidate candidate uh, i because it's the ith preference right comma name and if it's true we're going to equal zero meaning that we found a match right so if we do that then we need to update the ranks let's space this out just for some conformity here so if true let's update the ranks and let's get this out of here because we're not closing that yet so if true and let's actually space it like that we want to put our notes inside where they are going so ranks uh, of rank equals i and then we're going to return true and let's close this out and let's close out our initial loop here and then if the name is invalid we're just going to return false so that should complete our vote function so now we need to complete the record preference function so let's go back to tideman here and scroll down and we're going to update the record preference here so now we have void record void record preferences int ranks so this line is saying that record preferences takes the argument ranks and that's the array representing the voters preference so what we need to do is we need a loop that iterates over each candidate uh, as a preferred candidate and that will go from first to second to last candidate so we're going to need a nested for loop in this instance and that's gonna look like this let's get rid of this to do here so we're gonna do for and oops and i equal to zero when i is less than the candidate count and i plus plus to continue iterating over and then we had the notes told us it was i and j so we need to go over their favorite preference to their least favorite preference so we need a loop for the jth preference so we're going to do for int j equal to i plus one whoops j is less than candidate count j plus plus so this line starts the inner loop that iterates over each candidate that is the less preferred candidate going from the candidate immediately following the preferred candidate so j equals i plus one so whatever candidate came right after the ith candidate and then inside that we're going to update the loop and we need to retrieve the index of the preferred candidate and the less preferred candidate from the ranks array so the index should correspond with the candidate's position in the candidates array so we have two inputs here so we have uh, the preferred candidate equal to ranks in the array and then we have the less preferred candidate equal to ranks J. So now let's get rid of this J here. I don't know why that happened. All right, so now we need a line to increment the count of the preferences for the preferred candidate over the less preferred candidate in the preferences array. So we need to represent more than one voter's preferred candidate over the less preferred candidate. 
So that's going to look something like this. Preferences and open up the array and it's going to be the preferred candidate and the less preferred candidate and plus plus. And then I don't actually think we need that return there, but I'm going to leave it. Uh, it was already in the code, so why not? All right, so let's move on to the next one. We need to complete add pairs function. So let's get into that. Scroll down here. Get rid of this to do. And first we want to initialize our pair count to zero. So pair count equal zero. And then we need to start the loop that iterates over each candidate as the potential winner. So for int i equal to zero when i is less than the candidate count. i plus plus. And then we need our inner loop to start iterating over each candidate as a potential loser. So we got to start with the candidate that immediately follows the winner and avoids any duplicates and like self comparison, right? So let's do that. So our inner loop here and we're going to do four int j equal to i plus one. So the candidate immediately following the ith preference is going to be j less than candidate count comma j plus plus. And in that loop we need to check if candidate i is preferred over candidate j and compare them to the preferences array. So in that loop we are going to have if whoops so if the preference of i j is greater than the preference of j i and let's make this preferences and let's get this removed. If one preference is greater than the other preference, then what do we need to do? We need to add the pair to pairs. If candidate as i is preferred over j, then the winner of that current field is set to i and the loser is set to j and the pair count will have to be incremented. So that's going to be three lines of code. So we have pairs one and we have pair count dot winner equal to i and then let's do pairs 2 and pair count dot loser equal to j and then let's update it to pair count plus plus and let's fix <laughs> this right here there we go and just for spacing issues let's move this down and now we need an else if situation, right? Because we need to check if candidate J is preferred over candidate I by comparing them against the respective array. So we're going to do an else if, well, an else if, and we're going to repeat this same thing. So else if preferences I J is less than this time preferences j i then we need to do the same thing so pairs and pair count dot winner equals j we're doing the opposite remember so pairs and pair count let's fix that dot loser equals i and then pair count plus plus and then we need to make sure all these are closed one two three four good and again I don't think we need the return but it's already in there so let's leave it in there sort pairs in decreasing order by strength of victory so we have this portion here all right, so I found that I wasn't recording while I was reading this one, so I'm just going to read back through it uh, rather than redoing it for you. <laughs> so we have void sort uh, void sort pairs, which calls no argument. And then we need the first loop that iterates over the pairs array, but we exclude the last pair, the minus one, since there's no need to compare the any subsequent pair. 
And then we need an inner loop that goes over each of the unsorted portion of the pairs array minus i to ensure that each iteration is the largest unsorted element and it's in place at the end of the array. And then we have votes 1 and votes 2. So these lines are going to retrieve the number of votes from the candidate in the current pair votes 1 and the next pair votes 2 by accessing the preferences array using the winner and the loser in each field. Then we have to compare if votes 1 is less than votes 2 and then we need to swap the positions of the current pair, so pairs J and the next pairs, which would be pairs J plus 1 in the pairs array if the strength of the victory of the next pair is greater. So this makes sure that each of the pairs with the higher strength of victory will bubble up towards the beginning of the array. So my apologies for not recording that and that's the rundown of sort pairs. Hopefully that's the only part I missed and I was recording on add pairs. I'll edit this part out if I'm not a lunatic. Alright, so lock pairs. Complete the lock pairs function. The function should create a locked graph adding all the edges in decreasing order of victory strength so long as the edge would not create a cycle. Let's get into that. Okay, I did it again. I'm brain spacing out today, but I'm not fully done with this one. So okay, so we have void locked pairs. So it's calling no function and we have the first loop to iterate over the pairs array. That's for int i when it's less than the pair count i plus plus. Then we have our locked pairs i dot winner, pairs i dot loser. So we are adding the current pair to the locked graph by setting the corresponding entry of locked to true. And that'll represent the winner and the candidate represent the winner of the current pair. It'll be locked over the loser candidate. Then we have if create cycle pairs i winner. This line is going to check if adding the current pair to the, would create a cycle in the graph by calling creates cycle. Then it passes the winner candidate into the current pair as an argument. Now we are working on the locked pairs i dot winner. So let me finish this code while I'm actually recording. So pairs i dot winner and pairs i dot loser. Let's go back and fix this. There we go. And equals false. And one, two, three again with the return function. All right, so let's see here. Try and make this recording thing work. Sorry if this video skips a little bit. I was not unpausing my video and I'm doing my best here. Complete the print winner function. The function should print out the candidate who is the source of the graph. You may assume that there will be no more than one source. All right, so. We have void print winner void, so we're not calling any arguments here, so let's get started. And this time we need to loop over the candidate count array. So for int i equal to zero, i is less than the candidate counts, candidate count i plus plus. And then we're going to declare a boolean value here, so it's going to be bool. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to have a little fun with mine. Banana equals true. And banana is going to track down the current candidate without having to use an arrow to point to them. So we're going to open up a for loop here. And this one needs to start the inner loop that iterates over each candidate in the candidate's array. And it's going to check if any arrows point to the current candidate. So for int j equals 0, j less than candidate count j plus plus and in this loop is going to be an if statement where we need to check if there's an arrow pointing from candidate j to candidate i in the locked graph uh, by accessing the corresponding entry in the locked array so if locked j i and let's move that out there we go so if that happens we need to set the banana to false and break out of the inner loop and if it's found pointing to the current candidate so that'll indicate the candidate's not in this case banana so it's going to be is banana equal false and we're going to break out now let's get out of this loop here scroll down give us some space and we need to check if the current candidate is a banana so if is a banana then we'll do a print f and we're going to use our percent s so we're going to return the name of the current candidate if the winner using the printf function so percent s backslash n and let's put the quote in here backslash n candidates i close that close that and return
And again, not sure about that return there, but let's see if we leave all their returns in how this thing runs. All right, so some debug issues. If steer comp candidate, I did not have the S on it. And then I had an error in add pairs here. Preferences. And then locked pairs. I put a comma here instead of a period. And in the print winner, I should not have capitalized four. And for this one, I did use steer comp, and it looks like I appeared to not include string.h. Now that we have that, if that was the case, hopefully that's the only issue. Make tideman. I'm missing a semicolon here. All right, team, I got this updated. Don't forget on the last one here, untrue, I forgot a semicolon, so we put that in there. Now, I had to redo the locked pairs. I had to rewatch exactly what it was they were asking about here and have them explain why I couldn't use the is cycle as I had intended it. And that was because we had to create the logic to tell the program what a cycle is. So in order to do that, what we had to do is we had to use a create cycle function. Uh, that's a recursive helper function that checks the adding the edge between the winner and the loser that would have created a graph. So it takes two arguments, the winner and the loser, which indicate the candidates involved with the cycle, involved with the pair. Then we start with the base case. If winner is equal to loser and they're the same, then it returns true. So that's right here. Next, we use a loop to iterate through the candidates using the variable i that we have been using and the candidate count. So then we begin our for loop, and we use the same variable against the candidate count. Inside the loop, we have to check if there's a locked edge between the loser and candidate i and see if that's true. So if the recursive call does create cycle, then it returns true, meaning that a cycle has been detected and we return true from the current call function. Okay? If the loop completes it without finding a cycle, then we return false, adding the edge between the winner and the loser. Okay? Now, this is the more comfortable version of this, so I have to assume that you understand what it's asking for. So this is the check to add if the edge creates a cycle. So we have if winner is equal to loser is true, then we have our iteration right here. If locked loser creates winner i, then true. Otherwise, return false. So that's the information we had to use in locked pairs. So then we move on to locked pairs. So in this, we're going through the candidates in order without creating a cycle. So first, we have to iterate over the pairs in the decreasing order of the victory strength right here, right? And in each cycle, we're extracting the winner and the loser from the pairs. And then we want to check if locking the pair would create a cycle. So we call the create cycle function using the winner and loser's arguments. And this function returns false. It means that adding an edge does not create a cycle. If the check passes, meaning that no cycle has been created, we lock the pair by setting locked winner, loser to true which means we create a directed edge from the winner to the loser in the locked graph. This loop is going to continue until all pairs have been checked and locked as long as no cycles are created. So this is the update for that. I'll put that in the description so you can get the updated for locked pairs. The big change here is that we had to use the Boolean value of creates cycle. Creates cycle is the if here. And then we implement that into the locked pairs function here. When we do that and we run our check 50, you can see that everything comes back green. Now, I had the right idea when I did the code the first time. I used creates cycle, but for some reason I assumed that that was somewhere up in the coding until I watched the video and it said you need to implement the logic and I looked up in the code and realized that the logic wasn't there to define what creating a cycle is. They tell you about it in the pictures, they talk about it in the video, but it's actually not written into the machine, so we had to write it there, which is why we did the Boolean value of create cycle. Once we did the Boolean value and we implemented that logic, then we can use that logic to complete our locked pairs. Hopefully that makes sense for you all. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. This is the more comfortable version of it, so if you're watching this video, you should be comfortable enough to understand with what I'm speaking. This is CS50. That was Tideman. I am Devin, and as always, you are awesome. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you next time. Keep up the good work.